All right, so here's the latest update on the Chevy Cummins swap. Uh, put some heat shielding on the firewall. Maybe not necessary. Man, I hate this fucking song. Hang on a second. Anyway, I really fucking hate that song. So, <clears throat> heat shielding, uh, exhaust is a four inch metal pipe to a five inch, rest of, the, rest of it being five inch, but the down pipe is four inch because I can't fit it around everything. I can't fit a five inch pipe around the shackle hangers. Show this well enough here. Alright. So, that's the four inch section right there. It's a flange. I could have done it with V bands, but V bands cost money and this didn't. So we just cut a couple flanges, bolted them together. So there's the shackle hanger. There's the shackle. So, it's got to come around that. And then. See if I can show where it, how it connects up to the uh, factory mount here. Let me zoom out. So that's how. See, there's a clamp around it, and the clamp goes to the factory Cummins mount on the tranny there. And then it goes back a little. Here's another one of these flanges that we made, and that's where it goes to five inch. So it's right there, and the rest of the system is five inch. And you can see that. So that's the rest of it right there. It's a straight pipe, no muffler, just a turbo and a, a tube. That's all it is. There's another one of those flanges. And uh, I just sealed those with that orange Forma gasket, high temp Forma gasket stuff. That works pretty well, no leaks. And uh, I, I absolutely hate welding exhaust tubing. I can weld for like four hours straight, like a robot, because that's what I do here to be able to use the shop, um, <clears throat> welding these sign bases. But and I did all the welding on the truck myself. And I just hate welding exhaust tubing. It's, I don't like. I don't have the technique down. I just use some rebar here to make the hangers. Kind of ghetto, but whatever, it works. Um, and interestingly enough, it's actually a lot quieter with the rest of the exhaust than with it uh, four inch downpipe. I really, I thought it was going to have a lot more bass, like the kind of bass you feel in your chest, like a stereo, but it really doesn't. It's just quieter all around, and there's no resonance in the cab. Like it's quiet in the cab. Um, it's just, I, I'm really surprised by that. I, of course, I really like that too. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it's, it almost sounds like it's got a muffler in me. But, so then the other thing I, the thing I did today, I've got, had the exhaust done for a little while, but the thing I did today here was these uh, weird looking LED turn signals. So that's just a, a piece of aluminum that was sitting around the shop that I cut to that size. Drilled a couple holes in it and put these LEDs in here. And I don't know, what do you guys think? I mean, does this look retarded or what? <laughs> because I, I'm not, honestly, I'm not too big a fan of it, but I don't really care. I mean, to me, it's, it's, it's acceptable. It's not a show truck, obviously. I mean, the grill is, is complete garbage. I really, I got this grill for free. And you can see, and the plastic is just, it's all messed up. And like the, the day I installed it, I hit a, a pheasant jumped out in front of me and I hit the pheasant and cracked this right here. And, uh, so, I mean, I just, I was like, well, I, I suppose I should probably replace it. But then I figured, well, fucking A, the minute I replace it, I'm going to hit another pheasant. So I just left it on. <laughs> I never bothered to, but um, anyway, so with, with the LEDs there, these are like two-way LEDs. So they got a resistor on one of the wires, but it doesn't, my truck does not like them because it fucked up the way the signals work. So turn the parking lights on here. That's what I deal with now. <laughs> See that? What the fuck? But 
Maybe I'll try to show how they look here. Yeah, this doesn't really convey very well because it's like the camera doesn't show. They're actually well, they're not really that bright, but they really they grab your eye's attention. I'll say that they're definitely noticeable. They're pretty, they're not like they won't illuminate the space in front of them, but you're they you see them. And it doesn't really show too well on the camera, I don't think. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it's it's fucked up. Look at this. I actually didn't even know this, but notice this initially. But look at this. This filament here, there's some kind of thing where they use a, a common ground, like this light's ground goes back through the LEDs or something. I don't know how that works. I've got to research that. But you can see, like, these normally would be fully lit up. So, and look at this one, it's just barely glowing. Um, but then we, when we turn the turn signals on, it does that bullshit where it flashes really quickly, which I knew it was going to do. And I hope my camera doesn't die. My battery's running kind of low. Okay, so there are those awesome gauges of mine again. <laughs> but uh, so, all right, turn turn signal on. See, it flashes real fast, and that's really annoying. But it's, I don't know how this is set up. I really don't know how this works because this here now is going full brightness when it flashes, even though it's flashing way too fast. And this just, I mean, it looks fucking retarded, honestly. Like, yeah, <laughs> anyway, so that's a work in progress. <clears throat> but the other thing that I did today was uh, got my tack working. And before I, before I show how I did that, I, I want to show something else real quick. And this is how I got my, uh, my fuel pressure gauge, how I set this up. Because this is something that people don't really know how to do sometimes with, the, with these old P7100 injection pumps. But what you do is you run a gauge snubber, which is mine from Torque Tech. So I got the Torque Tech gauge snubber right here. What I, and what that is is a very small calibrated orifice calibrated hole drilled in that and then I had this hydraulic line made for me at this uh, stirred events auto parts made me this hose real quick and see that right there looping up comes up right here and I attach that with this little yeah, trying to get to show up but just a little clamp thing goes around it and holds it in place. See? And that's the setting unit right there. So it's not a mechanical gauge, obviously. I'm not going to put diesel inside my cab. So I know some guys do that. I will not do that. Simply because I had mechanical oil pressure gauges leak in my Honda. I had a mechanical oil pressure gauge leak in my Honda. I didn't like getting oil all inside my, all over my dash. So there's no way I'm going to risk that with diesel. So it's a electric gauge anyway. <clears throat> but why you have to do that, why you, why you have to run this hose and, and run the gauge snubber, and etc., is that the, the lift pump is, is a mechanical plunger style pump and you get a real high pressure spike. And uh, so you need, to, you need to have some cushion. So what this, ho this hose here is actually filled with air. I did not empty the hose, did not bleed the hose, so it's full of air. And so the air is like a, it's like a spring, it's like a cushion. So. That's how that works. Anyway, so now, next thing I want to show how I did this is, uh, and some of the guys, on, I know there's a thread on 4BT swaps right now about the internal regulator with a Dodge uh, alternator. That's what I did too. So, this got an internal regulator here. And uh, so what I did today, what the hell did I do with that light? So anyway, uh, I was not sure how I wanted to do this with the tack, but I thought about it a little more and I ended up buying this thing from Dakota Digital, which uses a W terminal. Um, this alternator, of course, did not have a W terminal output on the back of it, but it was really easy to do this. All I did is just 
pull this little cover off the back of the alternator, that little sheet metal cover right there, just pull that off, pull the connections off, and uh, <clears throat> there are like four screws on the back of it. You, you take it off, you'll know what I mean right away. Those are the stator. I, I was expecting to have uh, six, six poles. Cause that's, it's a three phase. Alternators are three phase. I figured it'd be a six poles, but there are four. I don't know what the deal is with that. I haven't thought about it enough. But anyway, I was like, yeah, I'll just see if it works. I honestly didn't even expect it to be this easy. But I just hooked this wire um, and I ran this over. So that's my W terminal. <clears throat> I still gotta loom up my whole harness, but my harness is pretty clean. I mean, I got, everything's just laid out nicely and it's all pretty clean. So I'm just, I started to put the loom here. I haven't taped it or anything yet, but yeah, I mean, pretty happy that all this is coming together. So, all right, so then I, I took, there's a white wire on the harness, the factory wire going to the tack. So I knew which wire that was. And I extended that and I had a long enough wire come from the W terminal to run them both into the cab. So I'll show how I did this. Uh, and they're in this loom right here. Um, and also, another little thing you guys might be interested in. See that right there? That's where that factory buzzer, really annoying thing that everybody pulls out goes. This is a really good spot to get power, ground, and illumination, like connected to the dimmer illumination for your gauges or whatever else. So I'm using this to run my, zoom out real quick. I'm using that red wire there. Also notice how everything I do is soldering heat shrink. <clears throat> Here's my Dakota Digital tack adapter. I'm laying on my side on the floor right now, but yeah, so I just zip tied that to the, uh, that metal beam right there. And it's real easy to connect this. All you got is your power, ground, signal in, signal out, just four wires, really easy to connect. And to calibrate it, you just press up or down. Dakota Digital, it's only about maybe 65 bucks too. So it's not a bad deal. I don't know what the tax, uh, should be reading, but I believe it's what, what I found on, online is uh, I guess it's 750 to 800 RPM is your idle speed. So I'm gonna open the door and then I'm gonna start the truck real quick. So So, you can sort of hear the exhaust and check out the tack, I guess. But yeah, so that's pretty much what I got done. 
on this recently. I still have some other stuff to do on it, and I'll do a few more videos. I mean, it's a project. It never, it never ends. It never will end. As long as I have this truck, I'm always going to be modifying it. So, all right, until next time.